He is turning towards you, Dark. Yep, that's great. I just let one go. Nice. Got him. Good hit. Bring that reclaimer in. Welcome back everyone. If you're new, welcome. I'm Dark Hour 717. We all know the variety of activities there is to take on in the Star Citizen universe. From bounty hunting, piracy, medical, and trading, they're all amazing gameplay loops that we all experience and enjoy in some form. So Patch 318 really brings in another long-awaited gameplay loop that focuses on the industrial side of the verse. Along with gameplay such as mining, this new venture brings in a blue-collar approach to earning a UEC in Star Citizen. Salvaging. Much like mining, it is a new take on an industrial aspect to the verse, before we get into the details though, if you like these videos, do me a favor, hit the like and subscribe button. It really does help get the videos out to more people and I truly appreciate it. And to those who have already subscribed, thank you. Salvaging much like mining is starting out in a very simplified format. To perform salvaging, you will need one of three things. The multi-tool with the salvaging attachments, the Drake Vulture, or the Aegis Reclaimer. Each of these provide for a different level of salvaging, each one on a larger scale than the one before it. The multi-tool attachment is available in the game, as is the Aegis Reclaimer. Though the Drake Vulture, as it is newly being released with Patch 318, will be at least 90 days before it's available in-game for purchase. We will take a look today at all three forms of salvaging and how to perform them. And we'll also take a look at how much it pays. Before you can start reaping the rewards of this new gameplay loop, you need to know where to go to be profitable. Salvaging can be done anywhere, in Zero-G scraping the panels or down on the surface tearing apart a wreck of a downed combatant. Zero-G offers advantage when using the Vulture or Reclaimer as you can easily get on all sides of the ship or debris that you're salvaging. We do tend to find the opportunities are more abundant in the coldness of space as that is where there are multiple wrecks and panels placed by CIG. We have found that using the asteroid field spawn matrix is useful. This one here is actually courtesy of redmonstergaming.com. I recommend you check out their website as they have a lot of good information there. It lists areas through all the Lagrange points that certain ships and other debris will spawn. Once there, it is on you to locate them and salvage them. Many ships are automatically placed out there for you to salvage from an Avenger Titan all the way up to an 890 jump, including scrap debris that is found in the forms of panels and can be quite lucrative as well. The Matrix also has an added benefit to inform you of the types of mineable asteroids there are, as well as whether there is a refinery available in the area or not. The Air and Halo of course has many wrecks and debris strewn throughout it as well. When searching areas, you will want to arrive and begin doing pings. And what you're going to look for is the little icon that looks like a meteoroid. Another telltale sign that there may be something salvageable in an area is when in scan mode, you see off in the distance an area with higher than normal RS signature of 1700. So typically 1700 is going to be the normal level. Anything above that means that there could be something salvageable there. When it comes to salvaging, you're going to see different modules that are used on the different tools and vehicles that you use for this gameplay loop. In the case of hand salvaging, you have just a single salvage beam that handles both salvage and repair. When it comes down to the Vulture, you're going to see two different modules on there. You have the Cinch and the Abrade. Both are very similar in efficiency rating and speed. But where you're going to see the biggest difference is the Cinch has a 1.5 meter diameter of its beam and the Abrade has a 3.5 meter diameter. But other than that, they are fairly similar and it seems to be the favorite is the Abrade of those using the Vulture. What it actually gives up a little bit on speed, it does make up more for in efficiency. When it comes to the Reclaimer, you're going to see that it has both the Abrade and the Trawler module. Now the Abrade we actually talked about, but the Trawler has a 6 meter diameter beam with a lower 0.69 efficiency rating as well as a 0.15 speed which is much slower than the Abrade. Again, with the Reclaimer, it seems that the Abrade is the more popular. Getting into hand salvaging, what you're going to be looking at is it consists of using the Pyro multi-tool. Now this is actually the first level of salvage. 
and this uses the tool in a fairly easy way. First, you're going to need to make sure that you have the multi-tool itself. And along with that, you need to make sure that you purchase the Cambio Light SRT attachment as well as the Cambio Light SRT attachment canister. These can be obtained at many dumpers depots as well as LaGrange stations on the cargo and refinery decks. And the canister is what you'll use to store the material in after salvaging prior to selling it. To use the multi-tool, make sure to have the SRT attachment installed through the inventory menu and have the canisters placed in the ammo slots on your armor. Load a can by tapping the reload key, which is R on the keyboard, and then right click to aim down sight on the multi-tool and pull the trigger and you'll begin extracting. With the HUD in ADS, you can see when the canister is full and in order to swap it, just tap the R key again and swap the canister for an empty one if you have one equipped on the ammo slot of your armor. Hand salvaging is the entry level method of salvaging wrecks, though each canister does not sell for much, approximately 192 AUEC when it's full, there is an additional benefit to having the multi-tool and canisters available, and that is for repair. Currently mostly cosmetic, you can use the multi-tool to remove material off one piece of debris and then use it to repair your own ship. By toggling the mode using the B key, you can place the multi-tool into repair mode and with a full SRT canister begin patching your own ship. Again, this is mostly cosmetic and will not replace any missing components or armament. Keep in mind when it comes to getting the SRT canister and attachment, you can also manufacture these on the Reclaimer or Vulture in the cargo area where the crates are ejected from the processing area. This will bring us to the Drake Vulture, which is the second and mid-tier level of salvaging. Releasing with Patch 318, the Vulture has been pledged by many and will be available for pledge again with the 318 patch release. The original pledge price has been 140 US dollars. On launch, I do expect that we're going to see this go up likely equal or just around the cost of the Prospector. Though I do anticipate we'll see a War Bond version that will be priced close to the original pledge cost of 140 US dollars. The Drake Vulture is designed to be operated solo, much like the Prospector. Outfitted with a single operator seat, it features two Baylor salvage heads mounted on the outstretched arms of the Vulture. These consist of two salvage modules, the cinch and the abrade modules. Not currently something you're going to really worry about changing as there are not many options for these salvage heads to be changed out. As the operator, you do have control over the entire operation though, and this is on a small scale compared to the Reclaimer. Once you do find a salvageable wreck, you're going to begin by placing the ship in salvage mode, which by default is done by hitting the M key on the keyboard. And from there, just as with mining, you can fire the salvage beam. Using the left click on the mouse button or whatever trigger on a HOTUS or HOSTESS setup that you have. You will want to work the beams back and forth over the rack within the yellow borders. These lines are not accurately showing as it seems to be seen from either side though. Salvaging can be done in all areas except where there's non-salvageable materials. One way that you can tell that there are non-salvageable materials is that the salvage beam will begin to slow and lower in intensity. At the base of the HUD, you will see indicators of what the percentage of salvageable materials is within the location of the beam itself. Also at the base in the center, you will see the salvage head alignment indicator. In the top HUD, you can actually see an indicator of the progress in filling a container in the cargo hold. Once this reaches full, shut off the salvage beam and wait for the container to be ejected. Once it is ejected, you can continue. So be aware you can only have one full container ejected and fill one additional container before you're forced to proceed to the hold and move both containers to the cargo grid. To do this, you'll need a tractor beam attachment for your multi-tool and proceed down the ladder in the back of the hab area to the cargo bay. Once there, use the tractor beam to move the container that has been ejected onto the cargo grid. Then you can hit the eject button on the panel for the full container that is still inside the collector. The cargo grid itself can carry 12 SCU or 12 containers. The ejection port can maintain one additional crate providing for a full load of salvage material on the Vulture at 13 SCU. Once this is full, it is time to transfer to a larger ship or proceed to port to sell the material. While the Vulture is built and set up for a single operator, some significant time can be saved by having a second crew member on board to alleviate the back and forth running to clear the container chute. This also comes in handy if you are working with a larger cargo ship and can maximize profit. And the fact that you can continue to salvage as they move crates from the Vulture to the larger ship. 
One thing to note is that the container chutes on both the Vulture and the Reclaimer offer the ability to produce a variety of utility items. This can include the multi-tool itself, tractor beam attachment, both SRT attachments, and really this is the first instance of being able to manufacture your own personal items in game. After the Vulture, this brings us to the Aegis Reclaimer. The Aegis Reclaimer is a large scale salvage ship and is far more capable than just the current hull scraping. And this is all stuff that we'll eventually see with the use of the claws, which are mounted underneath, as well as the grinding mauler that's accessible from the underneath of the ship. And this will all come in with future iterations of salvage. Currently at this time though, it is restricted to hull scraping, though it does take this activity to the next level. With two baler salvage heads, the reclaimer uses the abrade and the trawler salvaging modules to do its work. The Reclaimer is salvaging on a large scale though and requires an adequate crew to properly conduct its work. So capable to be operated with a minimum of two people, the progress really suffers in the lack of adequate crew to run both salvage lasers and stack crates in the processing area. Best case scenario to the Reclaimer is operated with a minimum four-man team. Two up front operating the salvage turrets and repositioning the ship and two in the salvage hold pulling and positioning boxes in the massive bay. The operation of the turrets is much the same as in the Vulture, with the exception that the Reclaimer salvage heads are a single beam operated one on each side of the ship. These are operated from the seat just aft of the pilot's and co-pilot's chairs. Some things to also note is that the operator of the salvage head, you also take control of the exterior spotlight. Just as on the Vulture, you will work these beams side to side as you scrape the hull of any debris. The Reclaimer does make quick work of any materials and will then eject the RMC containers in the rear of the ship in the salvage processing area. With two ejection ports for the material, it is here that the other teammates will pull the material and place it on the grid. The area here does consist of 120 SCU of space, though not a large amount for the size of the open space, it is in addition to the 180 SCU in the cargo hold that helps make the Reclaimer pay off. This does require one of the people in back to load the crates onto the elevator and manually move them to the cargo hold. Between the two areas, there's a total of 300 SCU of sellable space. But also be aware that there is no cargo grid on the elevator and moving it can sometimes be hazardous. Much like the Vulture, the Reclaimer is also set up to allow for ease of working with a large cargo ship. When you're pulling items off the container chute, once the salvage bay and cargo hold is full, you can place the crates in the salvage hold. Though no grid exists here, you can store a few crates here, and once the cargo ship is in the area, you can station it near the rear of the Reclaimer and tractor beam crates from the Reclaimer to the awaiting cargo ship once that hatch is open. We have found that the C2 does work for this, though the Drake Caterpillar is the easiest to work with for this function. This will also help maximize profits as well. One key thing to remember is though that the cargo ship being used is best to be owned by the same person that owns the Reclaimer or the Vulture. This is due to the fact that the commodity is sold at a lower cost when sold to a TDD by someone other than the salvaging ship's owner. If the owner of the Reclaimer or Vulture is the same as the cargo ship, then you can sell for full price. The reason for this is, is that the salvage material is fully stealable, meaning that pirates that take the ship or the cargo ship can take and sell the materials, but due to the fact that they appear stolen, it is at a lower profit. And when you're talking about a Reclaimer or Caterpillar's worth of material, this can get costly. In total, at current pricing on PTU, a single SCU of salvage material is selling for 7,700 AUEC. The profit for the salvage material is definitely vast. The undetermined part is whether just like on PTU, when you go to sell it, are you going to have the ability to have it be wide open where there's no limit to the amount that you can sell, or will it be subject to a limitation on the amount that can be done per transaction like trade commodity? If it stays the way it is and there is no delay in selling, the following is the profit that can be made. In the Cambio salvage container, if you sell a single container, it will earn you 192 AUEC. If you bring in a full Vulture with 13 SCU, you can actually pocket 100,100 AUEC. If you land a Reclaimer with 300 SCU of salvage material, you'll be looking at 2,310,000 AUEC. And if you use a cargo ship, much like the Caterpillar, you're going to be bringing in 576 SCU, which will make you 4,435,200 AUEC. And if you happen to use a C2, 
well that's 696 SCU and that's going to pocket you 5,359,200 AUEC now these are very promising profits also with no shortage of debris to salvage even with a five-man team filling a reclaimer each crew member is walking away with 462,000 AUEC and if filling a C2 along with the reclaimer each person is going to walk away with 1,533,840 AUEC it's like we're working for scraps J scale yeah literally <laughs> <laughs> Salvaging in general is a long-awaited part of Star Citizen, and in its infancy shows potential to be as large of an AUEC earner as mining. Minute for minute comparison, they are very comparable. Where mining really is going to pay off is in the greater figures it earns through the refining process, which allows an interaction-free increase in the profit. Salvage itself, though, has a long and open road where they can take the gameplay loop and is very promising. Included with this is the fact that with patch 319, they're already talking about the addition of salvage based mission. And with salvaging, you also have the vast and wide open space in which finding areas to salvage also brings with it a sense of safety throughout the air and halo. Salvage has immense probability to equal the popularity of mining, and of course for quicker finds of wrecks to salvage, you can always visit one of the Lagrange stations to take on the wrecks there. So this does bring in a greater risk of piracy and aggressors in those areas. And this is where salvaging will actually play into the piracy gameplay loop and providing for more people out there earning AUEC through these industrial gameplay loops in which they can actually go and pirate and earn different things or steal the commodity. As promising as salvaging is, there are also some areas in which improvement can be made with what is available now. The stacking ability of crates on the reclaimer is lacking. In an area with such a huge amount of space, it would be logical that the crates would be able to be stacked, just the same as on other cargo vessels like the Vulture or the C2 or even the Caterpillar. This would greatly expand the storage capacity beyond the 120 SCU it currently holds, making even more of a demand for its use. And this would also negate the need to move it onto an outside cargo ship. Cargo grid is definitely needed on the reclaimer's elevator as well as making it safer and easier to move the materials from the salvage processing to the cargo bay of the ship. And of course, the reclaimer is in much need of more work on the reliability of this rear elevator as well. In closing though, salvage is a welcome addition to the gameplay loops for Star Citizen, and one that those who love mining and the more industrial side of the game will come to love and will also come to profit greatly from it. I definitely recommend that anybody that likes this side of Star Citizen, give it a try, get out there, try your hand at salvaging. I highly doubt anybody's going to be overly disappointed with it, and the future of this is really unlimited. Salvaging does stand to become the next detailed gameplay loop as it progresses with the use of more salvage beams, tools, and ship functions. And I definitely truly look forward to seeing how it's going to grow. And that's about it for the salvage aspect, and I hope you find this video useful. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. You can also check out our streams on Twitch every Sunday and Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, as well as here on YouTube every Thursday at 7 p.m. as well. If you want to help support the channel, check out the merch store, the Patreon, or even hit the join button above to get a membership. I definitely appreciate all the support from everyone, and I want to say thank you. Please be safe out there, though, and we will catch you in the verse.